Yesterday, we started the quarterbacks list. Today, we have the running backs. These are the gems of fantasy football. Most years, they win you your championships, so let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Here with the honorable mentions, and just keep in mind that these are guys that can range anywhere from 21 to just about 30, right? Uh, just some guys that I want to highlight for you guys to keep in the back of your mind here ahead of fantasy season. But Ramondre Stevenson, a guy that is a PPR monster when he's healthy, uh, but especially now with whether if it's Jacoby Brissett who likes to target the running backs or if it's Drake May, young quarterbacks like to target the tight ends and the running backs. Uh, this is a guy that could carve himself out a nice running back three season for our fantasy teams. Just someone to keep in mind here, especially uh, because both quarterbacks there in New England like to target the running back position. James Conner, I think this is an offense in Arizona that's going to run the ball a lot more than we think here in 2024 because we saw them address a lot of these needs in the draft, getting a lot of offensive linemen, getting some blocking tight ends, and of course they also picked up Trey Benson. However, I think this offense is going to lean on the run as we saw when Kyler returned to the field. So something to keep in mind here, I think James Conner, again, could be a sneaky uh, running back three for our teams, whether if it's through the run game or the receiving game. Joe Mixon made his way over to Houston, and this is a situation where there's just a lot of mouths to feed. I think everybody in the top 20 has an argument to carve themselves out a way better season. And again, you can have them. I've seen people have them as high as number eight on their fantasy list. I'm not sold yet, but again, it's early. When fantasy season comes around, I might come around to the idea of Joe Mixon in Houston. Najee Harris, with the addition of Arthur Smith going over as the offensive coordinator there in Pittsburgh, I think Najee Harris can sneakily have a thousand yard, maybe eight to 10 rushing touchdown season. Again, that's best case scenario. But if that were to happen, Najee Harris is going to be an amazing steal down the board. But again, we have those questions and concerns every year about Najee. Is, you know, is, is it going to be his backfield this year or is it going to be a split backfield? Something we got to wait and see with Arthur Smith. For Tony Pollard, of course, he made his way over to Tennessee. Is, you know, as of right now, he's the starting running back. But I think for the simple fact that he is a PPR monster, when he's healthy, of course, I think this is an offense that has a lot of receiving talent on the boundary. But I think Tony Pollard could sneakily have 40 to 50 receptions with Will Levis there at the quarterback, especially in a division where they're going to have to pass a lot to compete for the division. But at number 20, let's get into one of my favorite players in the league, period. And I'm not a Lions fan, but I liked him when he was with Chicago. Uh, David Montgomery, right? He was the running back 17 for last season. And that's with missing three games down the stretch. But if you take his average of 15 fantasy points a game and you span it over the entire season, which is he's typically been a healthy running back, he would have finished as a top 10 running back. That's how close it was from running back 10 to running back 17. Just a three game difference. Uh, but he's in the same exact situation as last year. Great offensive line. It's a ground and pound offense. And you the only downside in Monty this year is that it might be more so sliding in the favor of Jameer Gibbs as far as touches being uh, divvied up. It might be a 60-40 split as far as uh, last year or last year compared to this year. Uh, but even if he does take a little dip in production, I still think he's going to be the bruiser goal line running back for Detroit. And he could easily rack up 10 plus touchdowns yet again, making him a very good running back two option. But also, as we saw, he was used in the past game more than we thought last season. Can that translate over? I think he can. And I think Monty definitely still, I guess, this, let's not overlook David Montgomery. At number 19, his old team, but the new running back, uh, is DeAndre Swift. Made his way over from Philadelphia after coming off a career season. He was the running back 20 last year, and he did have a terrible second half to the year. Uh, but again, he moved on to Chicago. He got his money. And Chicago was clearly not sold on this carousel of running back that they currently have. With Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert, they said, let's go out there and get the proven veteran in DeAndre Swift. So again, the capital is there with them. Chicago is going to use them as their primary back. But as we know, this offense is loaded in Chicago. So kind of like Joe Mixon, there's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense, but only one football. So that's the only worry I have about DeAndre Swift. However, I do like DeAndre Swift for two reasons. This is a team that the boxes are always going to be light because of the receiving talent on this team. From Cole Komet, D DJ Moore, and Keenan Allen, the boxes are going to be light. And of course, we know DeAndre Swift is a shifty running back. 
If he can make one or two cuts and make the right read, I think this is a guy that can easily average four to five yards of carry, as crazy as that may sound, uh, and, and carve himself out a very nice season here in Chicago because he's kind of going under the radar as far as fantasy options in this offense. But even if he doesn't, he's, a, he's still a receiving back, and Caleb Williams, again, is a young quarterback. Young quarterbacks like to favor the tight ends and the running backs, as we've seen in fantasy history DeAndre Swift, whether that's on the running game or the receiving game, I like his upside here in 2024. But again, I'm going to play it safe because I can see a lot of different scenarios playing out for DeAndre Swift. He doesn't have the greatest track history as far as fantasy football. I'm going to play it safe, have him at number 19. At number 18, Aaron Jones, another running back that switched teams as he went from a Green Bay, a longtime Packer, over to the Vikings, a division rival. But he did miss a lot of time last year. But again, on a per game basis, he was the he was the running back 10 throughout the entire season. Again, limited sample size. But when he was playing, he was productive, even after coming off of some injuries. But for the same reasons that I like DeAndre Swift, I like uh, Aaron Jones here, excuse me, as he has a great offensive line in the quarterback, whether if it's Sam Darnold or JJ McCarthy, they're gonna target him in the passing game. And boxes are, are going to be light because he has such a great receiving room around him. The only thing you have to worry about, of course, is the usage of Ty Chandler. He came onto the scene last season. Is it going to be a 50-50 split? Is it going to be in the favor of, of Ty Chandler? Something we got to monitor as we get closer to the season. Again, we're in May. A lot of things can happen from now until then. Uh, and number 17, Ken Walker. He was the running back 19 last season, but on a per-game basis, he was in the top 15. Same situation as last year, but it might just be amplified this year with now the addition of a defensive head coach coming into the fold in uh, Mike McDonald, I, I believe is his name. But as far as his fantasy case, this is a, a guy that, again, has a defensive head coach. Defensive head coaches like to call the game like a defensive coach. <laughs> they like to control the clock. They like to run the football and, and get the ball into the running back's hands as much as possible. Again, uh, so Ken Walker is going to have a lot of touches there this season, no doubt about it. The boxes are always going to be light because, again, he has the receiving talent around him. I Again, we're all kind of waiting on that explosive top five level year from Ken Walker if it's not this year, I don't know what year it's going to be. So I'm going to bank on the upside and the hunger of Ken Walker to get that big contract. And number 16 is going to be Alvin Kamara. Mr. Consistency, <laughs> whether he's suspended or not, this is a guy that was the running back 11 last year after missing a month of the year and, and some games down the stretch. But on a per-game basis, this is a guy that was the running back three on the season. That's how dynamic and consistent Alvin Kamara is on a year-to-year -year basis. But this might just be the last big year from Alvin Kamara because he is 28. He's going to be 29 this season. Of course, when we know running backs get towards that 30-year-old mark, they kind of start to fall off a cliff a little bit. Uh, so, again, if that's the case, let's capitalize on his last elite season. And now with an improved offensive line, I think Alvin Kamara could be you know, very, very close to being a top 10 running back. I think is his upside is a top 8 to 10 running back. Again, Mr. Consistency, you know what you're getting in Alvin Kamara. Uh, at number 15, Devon Achan, a guy that was a, what, fifth or sixth round pick last year, but came out of nowhere, and, and he was nothing but speed and electricity for this Miami offense. He was the running back 24 last season, but again, that was with missing six games in, set, in uh, I guess, six and a half games, because the one game he got hurt early in, uh, early in the game. But again, he basically missed seven games last year and was still a running back two on most fantasy teams. On a per-game basis, though, he was the running back five on the season. He should only get more opportunities this year with most are getting a little bit older. And of course, now there's trust in this offense in a guy like Devon Achan. Uh, and, and again, this is a guy that last year uh, in limited touches was still electric and still won us multiple fantasy football games because he was such a dynamic player with the football in his hands. Uh, but again, he, he imagine him now with a bigger workload is what I'm getting at, because now the team trusts him a little bit more, and we can expect Devon Achan in year two to get a little bit more touches here, especially because, uh, again, most of a little bit older. But the only thing we have to worry about also with Devon Achan is his durability. Again, he missed seven games last season. Can he stay healthy with his frame? Uh, well, again, you just got to hope that you get him healthy, because when he's healthy... He's a top 10 running back. Uh, at number 14, Rashad White. It might be a little bit low. And again, I'm willing to hear you guys out in the comment section, but I'm going to play it a little bit safe as of right now. 
but he was the running back four last year, and he didn't miss a single game. So we love the durability as fantasy players, but he was a PPR monster. He had 65 receptions, 550 yards, and three receiving touchdowns alone. That doesn't even include his production on the ground, which he was also elite. So given the fact that he's in the same exact scenario this year, I don't see why he can't have similar production. I don't think Baker's going to all of a sudden go away from the running back position. Uh, but again, it really just came down to my belief that this Bucks team as a whole might just take a little dip in production this year. I don't believe in the Bucks as highly as I was on them the last year. So just for that reason, I have all of their fantasy guys just kind of moving down my boards just a little bit here in 2024. But he's still worth a second, third round pick in fantasy drafts. I love the upside of Rashad White. And no doubt, if he was my running back one, I'd still be pretty happy with it going into 2024. At number 13, it is James Cook. The running back 12 from last year, and he exploded after this team changed offensive coordinators. Of course, they focused on the run a little bit more here uh, with Ken Dorsey at the helm. Uh, well, uh, without Ken Dorsey, excuse me. Uh, but this team lost Stephon Diggs this offseason. Of course, if you didn't know that, now you know Stephon Diggs is no longer here. So that opens up 160 targets in this offense. So outside of Dalton Kincaid, who's going to take a lot of those targets, uh, James Cook's biggest competition in the receiving game is going to be Khalil Shakur, Curtis Samuel, and Keon Coleman, a rookie wide receiver one. <laughs> uh, again, James Cook had 54 receptions, 440 plus yards, and four receiving touchdowns through the air last season. I can easily see those jump with those open targets available to maybe 65 receptions for, you know, five to 600 yards and maybe six touchdowns. Again, a little bump, but as far as fantasy, those are major numbers. So if that is the case, if he does have a receiving bump this year, I do like him as a top 10 running back. But again, I, I just trust 12 guys a little bit more at the moment. So James Cook at number 13, but again, he could be easily as high as seven on this list. Uh, at number 12, Isaiah Pacheco. He was the running back 15 from last season, and that was with missing three games, uh, of course, throughout the year. I like him for the same reasons that I like a lot of other running backs on this list. We know this offense has added a lot of talent. It's going to be light boxes as far as the front seven on the defensive side. So uh, this is a guy that is a hard runner, and I believe he's going under the radar. If he can make the right reads on the offensive line, which they have a great one, uh, again, especially with this offensive talent and how spread out the defenses are going to be, I think Pacheco could be the unsung hero of the Chiefs this year, just like he was last year. And uh, whether if it's in the receiving game or the running game, uh, I think J Isaiah Pacheco is going to have his best season yet, especially now that he has basically no competition in that backfield. I I'm expecting a big year from Isaiah Pacheco. At number 11, it is J uh, Josh Jacobs. He was the running back 28 from last season, but he also missed six games or the last six games of the season. So he's healthy, he's fresh, he's ready to get back on the, uh, on the field. And on a per game basis, this was the running back 11 from last season. So I have him at that mark this year. Uh, but he just signed a big contract to join, to join the Green Bay Packers, excuse me. Uh, this is a team who got rid of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon to bring in Josh Jacobs. So this team wants to use him and probably a, a fair amount. But he's in an offense that doesn't really have a true number one wide receiver. So Josh Jacobs is almost guaranteed at least a portion of that receiving production out of the backfield this season. As Jordan Love targeted the running back position a lot last season. He was in the upper echelon as far as quarterbacks who targeted that position. Josh Jacobs is, a, is an okay receiver. I think, again, he can have a great production workload this season as far as the receiving game. But this is a team that also improved their offensive line, and they're going to have to score a lot of points to win this division or at least compete for the division title. I won't go as far as to say that Josh Jacobs is going to return to what he was for Vegas two years ago when he was a top three running back. Uh, but I still think he has the, the ceiling to finish as a top five guy. But he also has the floor to finish probably no later than the running back 20. So if you can get that guy in the fourth or fifth round, I love his upside and I love his floor. So that's why I have him at number 11. Just the combination. Again, we sometimes we need that combination here as fantasy players. Uh, but that's going to do it here. Quicker episode today. But uh, again, every single week from now until fantasy football season ends, I'm going to be releasing two fantasy videos a week of course other podcasts as well uh but whether if that's ranking videos whether if that's mock drafts draft strategy videos or other videos along the way 
I have it all planned out for you guys. You guys love this content last year. We saw a lot of channel growth because of it. Uh, but of course, it, it, the comment section is always a safe place as well. So let me know what you think. I always get to you guys as fast as I possibly can. And we can talk fantasy because that's what we all love to do ultimately. Uh, but again, never too early. On uh, Next week, we're going to have the receivers and tight end countdown. And then we get into the top 10. But until then, have a great weekend. Of course, watch some NBA playoff basketball. And uh, until Monday, stay happy, stay healthy. Get out of here.